In this question, a neutron of kinetic energy 65 electron volt collides inelastically with a single ionized helium atom at rest. It is scattered at an angle of 90 degree with respect to its original direction. We have to find the allowed values of the energy of neutron and that of the atom after the collision. If the atom gets de-excited subsequently by emitting radiation, we have to find the frequencies of emitted radiation. <coughs> Given that mass of helium atom is equal to 4 times mass of neutron, ionization energy of hydrogen atom is equal to 13.6 electron volt. So neutron is coming with kinetic energy is equal to 65 electron volt and it collides with the singly ionized helium plus initially it is at rest suppose mass of neutron is m and mass of helium plus will be 4m after the collision it is given that neutron is going at angle 90 degree with respect to its original direction suppose this neutron is going like this it is moving like this with kinetic energy k1 and helium plus momentum should remain conserve along x along y suppose uh, i am taking this x axis and this is y axis so in these two perpendicular directions momentum should be conserved initially there is no momentum in the y direction so helium plus will go in such a direction such that in y direction there is no momentum so its velocity's y component will be like this it is downward and there should be a balance in the horizontal direction also in x direction also so for x direction momentum conservation it should go like this so it said it should go like this it should go like this so net velocity or net momentum of helium plus will be in this direction suppose its kinetic energy is equal to k2 so kinetic energy of neutron is k1 and i am assuming it's k2 and it is going at some angle theta and it is given that the collision is inelastic there means that is there is some loss of kinetic energy and this loss must be used for the excitation of electrons of helium plus so if delta k is loss in kinetic energy then this loss must be used for excitation of electrons in helium plus and for helium plus its energy levels are such that for excitation from n is equal to 1 to n is equal to 2 the energy required is 40.8 electron volt for 1 2 3 the energy required is 48.36 electron volt and for excitation from 1 to 4 the energy required will be 51 electron volt and so on so possible values of uh, delta k can be only these values these discrete values are only the possible values of loss in kinetic energy so possible value of delta k it can be 40.8 it can be 48.36 it can be 51 electron volt like this we will confirm that actually these are the losses which are occurring in this situation so now we will apply 
the energy conservation the energy overall is conserved we can say that initially we have total kinetic energy k now we have kinetic energy k1 and k2 and some part of kinetic energy is lost which is used in the excitation of electron and that is delta k so this k is divided into some kinetic energy is with k1 some kinetic energy is now with k2 and some kinetic energy of this neutron is used in the excitation so this will be one of the equation now other equations i am forming using conservation of linear momentum conservation of linear momentum conservation of linear momentum so we have to apply conservation of linear momentum in two perpendicular directions first let us say along x in terms of kinetic energy i can write the momentum as under root 2 mk so under root 2 mk is the momentum so initial momentum along x is under root 2 masses m kinetic energy i am assuming k this is equal to finally along x only this and this will be under root 2 into now mass is 4m and it is k2 so momentum is under root 2 mk and this component will be cos theta so this is the equation number 2 now along y momentum conservation in y initially there is no momentum and this momentum and this momentum should balance each other so momentum due to this k1 and momentum due to this k2 in this downward direction they should balance each other then only the momentum in y direction is conserved initially there is no momentum in the y direction so we can write it is under root 2 m kinetic energy is now k1 and this is equal to under root 2 mass is 4 m k2 and this component will be sin theta this is our equation number 3 so we have to solve these equations in such a manner so that we can find the possible values of or allowed values of k1 and k2 so let us uh, do this on the next sheet so on doing this on the next sheet first we have to get rid of this uh, cos theta and sin theta then only we can uh, find equation for k1 and k2 and to get rid of this uh, cos theta and sin theta i am squaring the equation 2 and 3 and then adding them so squaring and adding the equation equation 2 ka square equation 3 square so it will become 2 mk and it is 2 mk1 now it will become square of this and this square root will go and cos square theta plus sin square theta this will be common in both so it will come out as 2 4 mk2 now there is some cancellation 2 is cancelled this 1m is cancelled now there is a simple equation k plus k1 this is equal to 4k2 i am calling it as fourth equation and our the very first equation was initial kinetic energy k is equal to k1 plus k2 plus delta k this was our equation number 1 so now solving this two equation just uh, i am finding the value of k1 and k2 in terms of k and delta k so for finding the value of uh, k1 and k2 in terms of delta k just uh, put this value of k1 in this equation so from this equation k1 is equal to 4 k2 minus k and put in this equation k is equal to 
फोर के टू माइनस के प्लस के टू प्लस डेल्टा के नाउ वी हैव टू फाइंड द वैल्यू ऑफ के टू एंड दिस के टू विल बिकम के टू इज इक्वल टू दिस विल बी टोटल फाइव के टू दिस विल गो देयर इट विल बी टू के माइनस डेल्टा के डिवाइडेड बाई फाइव सो दिस इज द वैल्यू ऑफ के टू ऑन पुटिंग द वैल्यू ऑफ के टू इन वन ऑफ द इक्वेशंस आई कैन गेट के वन एंड के वन विल कम आउट एज थ्री के माइनस फोर डेल्टा के बाई फाइव नाउ द फाइनल आंसर टू बी गिवन बाय इंटरप्रेटिंग दिस टू इक्वेशंस नाउ वी कैन सी K2 and K1 cannot be negative. If we see this expression, K2 is the kinetic energy of helium plus. So this is for helium plus, and this is for neutron K1. If we see this, obviously delta K loss in kinetic energy cannot be greater than K. So 2K minus delta K is positive. So in this equation, there is no danger of K2 becoming negative. In this equation, as delta K. we put the higher values of delta k k1 will become lower so i am finding that but what can be the maximum value of delta k possible which can be in this equation such that k1 is k1 remains positive so for k1 positive k1 should be positive and again this should be positive this 3k minus 4 delta k should be greater than 0 and this delta k should be less than 3 by 4k on putting the value of k k is 65 delta k should be less than 3 by 4 into 65 and this value is around 48.75 electron volt that means delta k cannot be more than 48.75 now coming back to the possible values of delta k according to the energy levels of helium so according to energy levels of helium the possible values of delta k were 40.8 so 40.8 is acceptable 48.36 yes it is less than 48.75 this is also acceptable more than this cannot happen so we have to find the possible values using these two values of delta k so i am using these two values of delta k and finding the values of q1 and k2 so delta k values of delta k which are possible we have two values which are possible 40.8 electron volt and 48.36 electron volt and for this values we will find the values of k1 and the values of k2 we just have to put the values in this equation for finding the value of k1 kinetic energy of neutron just we have to put the k k65 in both the equations delta k first we will put 40.8 and then we will put 48. 36 so i am putting these values directly and writing the answers so if we use delta k is equal to 40.8 then the value of k1 will become 6.38 electron volt the value of k2 will come out as 17.84 electron volt and again for For forty-eight point thirty-six, this K one will be zero point three one two electron volt, and uh, this will become sixteen point three two eight electron volt. So first we will put delta K forty point eight, then we will put forty-eight point thirty-six K for both is sixty-five. Now in the second part of the problem, we have to find the the frequencies emitted when the atom gets de-excited. so from our analysis we find that 
the transition which are possible is one to two transitions possible and one to three transitions possible so electron can go up to n is equal to three so on d excitation on d excitation the possible transition are it can be three to one it can be two to one and there is one more possible transition is three to two so these are the three transition and for finding the value of frequency we just have to use the delta e energy emitted during transition is h name so we just have to use the delta e the difference of the difference of the energy in the levels this is equal to h nu and this nu can be found using delta e by h so i am just writing the values of uh, the frequencies for this different different levels so these values will be for the transition 2 to 1 this value of frequency will be 9.84 into 10 to the power 15 for the transition 3 to 1 this value will be 11.67 into 10 to the power 15 hertz for 3 to 2 this value will be 1.82 into 10 to the power 15 hertz and all these values can be calculated using the energy difference divided by the Planck's constant.